Right, and let's just move in uh, and get you some international headlines. Israel has launched a wave of airstrikes across southern Lebanon early this morning, calling it a preemptive strike on Hezbollah. This comes after Hezbollah said it had launched hundreds of rockets and drones to avenge the killing of one of its top commanders last month. This exchange of fire threatens to trigger an all-out war that could draw in the United States, Iran and militant groups across the region. It could also torpedo efforts to forge a ceasefire in Gaza, where Israel has been at war with Hamas, an ally of the Hezbollah, for over 10 months. Hezbollah has said it will halt the fighting in there and is a ceasefire in Gaza. Israel has declared a 48 hour state of emergency. Its airport has earlier closed but has now resumed operations. <laughs> עם שר הביטחון והרמטכ"ל, הנחינו את צה"ל לפעול באופן יזום להסיר את האיום. צה"ל פועל מאז בעוצמה לסכן את האיומים. הוא חיסל אלפי רקטות שכוונו לצפון הארץ, הוא מסכל גם איומים רבים אחרים, פועל בעוצמה גדולה הן בהגנה והן בהתקפה. What are we looking at the possibilities in terms of possibilities? See, you rightly said the situation between the Lebanon as well as uh, Israel seems to be escalating. We have seen that earlier there had been several drone attacks as well as the rockets were launched from their side because they were trying to avenge killing of their commander, Paul Shukar, who was killed uh, uh, last month in an airstrike by Israel. And since then, we have seen that uh, the situation had been tense and now there was a preemptive strike, airstrike in the southern uh, side of uh, Lebanon. Uh, and already we have seen that uh, Daniel Hagari, who is the spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces, he has asked the people to stay away from those areas because in many of the places it has been seen that the Hezbollah people are using the same areas to launch your strike. They are saying that civilians should move to different places to the safer areas because they are going to target all those places from where they had been trying to target them. We have seen that situation got worse when the last month one of their founding commander, Paul Shukar, was killed in one of the airstrikes. And since then there have been several airstrikes from the other side. And right now if you, you rightly said it's going to torpedo the force of ceasefire in the Gaza Strip also because everybody has been making efforts that there should be a kind of a ceasefire because the last 10 minutes of war is being fought in that yeah, we saw it was in October 7 last year when Hamas entered over the site. Since then, 3H continues to remain a headache for Israel, whether it's the in the Yemen, whether it's Hezbollah in uh, Lebanon, or whether it's uh, uh, Hezbollah in, uh, in Lebanon, or whether it's uh, Hamas uh, in the Gaza area. They continue to be remain problematic for the Israel because they have got the ammunition. If you look right now, Hezbollah, it's quite stronger from what we have seen the Hezbollah in 2006. Right now, they've got, uh, as per estimate right. by the United States of America, they've got more than... 150,000 rockets. Besides, they've got uh, the drone uh, that can, in fact, uh, uh, break the air defense system and can target many of the areas. So that way, it's that one of the reasons that 48-hour emergency is right now uh, sounded, because they want the people to stay alert and also uh, they, that uh, restriction has been imported by the IDF so that they can uh, better way target the uh, southern side right. so that they can uh, target all those areas where the Hezbollah had been trying to target them. Pradeep, thank you very much for joining us with those details.